All right, so in this video, what I wanna cover is how to do synthetic division when our divisor is quadratic. Now, most of you up to this point know we can only do synthetic division when our denominator is linear. So if it's quadratic, a lot of times we refer to long division. No, I hate long division. But there is a workaround, and in this video, that's what I want to focus on. Let's go and see how it's done. So you can see in these three examples, my denominator is quadratic. So to use synthetic division, all we simply need to do is factor them down to their linear factors and then do synthetic division twice. However, factoring down to linear factors is not always as easy as it is said. So let's look at each of these examples individually first before we get into synthetic division. On this first example, you can see the x squared plus x minus 2. I can actually factor that rather easily to x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now this next example, you see an x squared minus 5, which looks like a difference of two squares, except 5 is not a square number. So you can still factor it using that process, but if that's a little tricky for you, a quick little tip that you can do is just set it equal to 0, find the zeros, and then rewrite them as linear factors. To show you what I mean, it's simply just gonna look like this. So by using my inverse operations, I'm able to solve for x equals plus or minus square root of five. Now I can rewrite them as my linear factors, x minus square root of five times x plus square root of five. Now for this last example, you can see again, it can be a little confusing because I can't factor x squared plus one. So to get around this, we can set it equal to zero and to go ahead and solve to find our zeros. Now in this case, you can see we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So we're gonna enter our imaginary number system. And again, make sure you include that plus or minus. Therefore, when we have the zeros plus or minus i, our factors will be x minus i times x plus i. So now we're ready to get started with synthetic division. Now again, we have to do synthetic division twice for each of these linear factors. So we just need to pick one of the factors to do synthetic division with first. In this first example, I'll use the factor x plus 2 to divide into my polynomial. Therefore, when I set up synthetic division, I'll have a negative 2 on the outside and my coefficients 2, 3, negative 3, and negative 2 listed inside the synthetic division box. In the next example, I'll go ahead and use x minus square root of 5 as my factor. Then I'll use the coefficients of 4, negative 23, and 15. Now again, remember, I don't have an x cubed or a x term in this polynomial. So therefore, I need to use 0 as a place value. So the square root of 5 will be on the outside, and then 4, 0, negative 23, 0, and 15 will be my coefficients inside the synthetic division box. Now in this last example, again, I'll use the first factor, x minus i, to divide by. And again, you can divide by imaginary numbers. And my coefficients in this case, I have no place values, but I have a negative 1, a negative 2, negative 3, negative two, and a, well, again, another negative two inside of the synthetic division box. All right, so now to use the synthetic division algorithm, remember we're always gonna bring down the first term and then we're gonna multiply on the diagonal and add on the vertical. So again, it looks like this for the first example. I'm gonna bring down this first term and I'm gonna have a two. Now I'm gonna take a two times negative two, which is gonna leave me with a negative four. Three plus negative four is negative one. Negative two times negative one. Negative one times negative two is going to be a positive two that's gonna leave me with a negative one. Negative one times negative two is a positive two, and that's gonna add me to a zero. In this next example, we'll bring down the four. Now, four times the square root of five is going to be a four square root of five. Zero plus four square root of five is just gonna be a four square root of five. Now, four times square root of five times square root of five, well, square root of five times square root of five is five. It's five times four is 20. Negative 23 plus 20 is a negative three. Negative three times the square root of five is going to be a negative three square root of five. Zero plus negative square root of three is going to be a negative three square root of five. Negative square root of five times square root of five is going to be negative 15, which is going to equal a zero. And the last example, now I'm going to be multiplying using my i's. So I have a negative one. So I bring down the first term. Now negative one times i is a negative i. Now negative two plus i, you can't like combine those. So again, I'm just going to leave them as a negative two minus i. Now a negative two times negative i, well here I can use the distributive property, right? An i times negative two is going to be a negative two i. And I'm going to put these in parentheses so we don't get them confused. And then remember, i times i is negative one. So if I had a i times a negative i, that'd be a negative negative one, which would be a positive one. Now, if I combine these together, I can only add the negative three plus the one. So therefore that's gonna be, again, I'll use parentheses here. I'm not multiplying them, I'm just grouping them so you don't get them confused. This is going to be a negative two i minus two. Now again, I'll use my distributive property. So when I multiply that i, I'll have an i times negative two i, which would be a negative one. Negative one times negative two is going to be a positive two. And then negative two times i is gonna be negative two i. When I add these together, notice the negative two and the two, that's gonna go to zero. So that's now just gonna leave me with a negative two i. And remember, i times i is i squared. So therefore that's gonna be a positive two, which is gonna leave me a zero. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's on to part number two. So we did synthetic division with the first factor. Now we need to do it with the second factor. Now it's very important that we do synthetic division the second time that we use the quotient from our first division problem. So in this case, I have X minus one as my factor. So therefore I'm gonna set it up with a one, but rather than using the coefficients from the original problem, I'm gonna use the coefficients from our quotient from the first time we did synthetic division. So now let's go back through our synthetic division algorithm. So I'll bring down the two. Two times one is going to be a two, negative one plus two is going to be a positive one. One times one is one, and that's going to give me a zero. I don't know why I left that zero. That's a remainder, so you don't need that. Now, doing this next example, again, these are our coefficients. So now we're going to have a negative square root of five, and then we're going to take our coefficients four, four square root of five, negative three, and negative three square root of five. In this case, again, remember, bring down the four, okay? So we have four times negative square root of five, which is going to be a negative four square root of five. Well, again, that's going to go to a zero. Zero times negative square root of five is going to be a zero negative three plus zero is a negative three. Negative three times a negative square root of five is going to be a positive three square root of five, which again will give you a zero. All right, in our last example, I'm going to use negative i and then the coefficients negative one, negative two minus i, negative two i minus two, and negative two i. All right, now let's go ahead and get into the algorithm. So negative one, bring that down. Now negative one times negative i is going to be a positive i. I can only add the i's, right? That's gonna leave me with a negative two. Negative two times negative i is going to be a positive two i. Add that to this, I'm just gonna be left with a negative two. And negative two times negative i is going to be a positive two i, which again is gonna leave me with a zero. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have now all of our quotients, but they are in synthetic division form. So now it's time to write them as a polynomial. So remember, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the last term that we wrote down and that's always going to be our remainder. Since our remainder in all of these problems is zero, that means all of our divisors evenly divide into our polynomial. So therefore, this is going to be my remainder, my constant, and my linear coefficient. This final polynomial is going to be a two x plus one. In the second example, I have a remainder of zero, constant, a linear quadratic. Now again, I don't have a zero as a coefficient, so I don't need to write that. So we can write that as a four x squared minus three. And in my final example, again, I have a remainder constant linear quadratic, which gives me a negative x squared plus x minus two. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, you can do synthetic division when the divisor is quadratic. You just need to make sure you factor it down to linear factors and then do synthetic division twice. I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see my next video on synthetic division, check the next video. Cheers.